it's going to be interesting to see for this game to close things out uh, what type of adjustments there might be in this second game because there's a there's going to be because of the quick turnaround um, and the player rotation is is you're just going to assume that that's going to happen but they're also going to be without Lindsey Horan. And let's maybe chat about that a little bit. So because of the uh, January camp, it's sort of the unique uh, experience that this is for the team. This isn't your typical traditional uh, international like FIFA window. So prior to this camp and prior to the matches, an arrangement between uh, the United States women's national team and Olympic Lyon, Lindsey Horan's French club team, uh, she will be heading back to France uh, to continue you uh, the season with uh, with Lyon. So she is going to be unavailable for this upcoming game. And we got to start with that. First reactions from you, Lisa, yeah. and, and what do you think this is going to mean for, for this second game? Yeah, I mean, I we talked about it previously about how this is not a FIFA window and that's why New Zealand squad looks much different than what we will see in 2023 Women's World Cup. It's a lot younger of a crew because um, a lot of their players couldn't get out of their club contracts. And I think that for Lyon, uh, and Lindsay Heron is an incredible part of their midfield and part of their team that they didn't want to lose. But you look at the importance that she also brings to the United States women's national team and, and head coach Black Wadonofsky understanding that she's a crucial part to this U.S. roster. Um, so having that a prior agreement before this trip with the club where it, it's kind of like both sides bending a little bit, right? So, oh, well, um, like Leon, Olympic Leon saying like, okay, you get her for one game. You get her for the preseason camp. You get her for one game, and then we get her back uh, before we have our match against uh, Montpellier. And I think that it's a pretty even balance because Haran then gets to train with the U.S. and she gets to get one game under her belt. But I think it poses some interesting questions and maybe some dilemmas for Black Wadonofsky heading into this second match uh, with the U.S. against the Football Ferns because uh, Lindsey Horan is a player that saw significant minutes, right? She, she basically played the entire game um, in that first match uh, against New Zealand. So it, maybe that was also a reason, right? Because this was predetermined that she would be leaving after that first match, uh, that first friendly, going back to France. So it was predetermined that hey, she's going to play the full 90 in this first game and then we'll adjust moving forward. But um, I, I wasn't too surprised that this happened. I was a little surprised how we found out, right? So I feel like they could have announced this when the roster was named, similar to how they say they said when Crystal Dunn was first called back in, yeah, Crystal Dunn is going to be here, but she's not going to be competing at all. Like, hey, yes, we are calling Lindsay Horan in, but only for half the time, then she will return to play with OL. Oh, well. I think that was a little interesting how they dropped the news, but – I mean, I'm not too surprised about it. What about you? What do you think when you saw it? Yeah, it wasn't wasn't too too surprised. I mean, I, I'm I'm actually ch when you know when we saw that she wasn't going to be available, um, it made me want to like go back and and think of, and and sort of breeze through mm -hmm. maybe some of the releases that we were given. Like, it wasn't something that that we missed, you know? Because I'm with you. Because I'm trying to remember when when the roster dropped, for example, initially, and and getting to sit with Andonovsky. Um, during some of his media availabilities, like trying to recall some of that, if if he had dropped that nugget um, within some of the press conferences as well, right. but couldn't couldn't really couldn't really recall. But uh, we were also talking about doing an episode every day this week, so lots of yeah. things are <laughs> horrible. Like, maybe it's not us. Maybe we do need to sleep in a it's little an, bit. Or maybe like a, a mandatory afternoon nap us. today. <laughs> It's not them. It's us. I was like, geez, I'm like, is that a, is that an L for us? Like, did, did we drop the ball on that? But, but here we are now we're going to, we're going to talk about it. Um, We're going to talk about it now. Um, You know, I, I'm thinking about that first game though. Um, And we had dropped our predictions. We're like, like who, like, who are we going to see in the midfield? Like, what are we going to see from this team? And at this point, at this phase of the journey to the world cup for the United States, you and I were like, okay, similar pool of players within this 24 player roster for New Zealand. We're probably going to see a little bit of predictability. And we had mm -hmm. said like, you know what, we're probably going to see Haran, Lavelle, Sullivan. And while we did, we actually didn't see that till the second half. Uh, the starting lineup rolled out looking slightly different. Um, the 
re-inclusion of, of, of Mitch Purse in the front line, uh, Taylor Cornea getting nabbed with the star, and then and we ended up seeing her slotted in uh, lower into that defensive mid position. So now sort of the things that we know, right? Lindsey Horan unavailable for this game. Um, Taylor Korniak already having a 45 minutes in this role. Uh, the quick turnaround from, you know, t- Tuesday to Friday. What could this midfield look like going into this game? Uh, yeah, I think that's a question that a lot of people have to look at. And, and right, hindsight, as I said, that's why Lindsey Rand played 90 minutes in that first match. And maybe that's why we did see Korniak get the start to see how that relationship could develop between those three, Haran Lavelle and Korniak. Um, and we were all a little surprised, little, just a tiny bit surprised to see Korniak in that six dropped back much deeper. And I think that moving forward in the second match for the U S against New Zealand. Um, obviously Haran will not be in that midfield. I think Rose Lavelle still gets the start in that position. Uh, but I think he's going to go with Andy Sullivan in the defensive six role. We saw her in the second half, the second 45 minutes for the U S. Um, and I think right now that's who he's like deciding between. Is it going to be Andy Sullivan? Is it going to be Corniak is going to be Sam Coffey. Um, and I, I'm thinking that we'll get a start from Andy Sullivan in the defensive midfield role with a substitute in from Sam Coffey. I mean, I'm hoping players that didn't get time <laughs> last game get time, right? That's I'm going to be really honest. And Sam Coffey is one of those players that I dubbed uh, as soon as we saw this roster as, as a player I wanted to get significant minutes with this U.S. team and with this U.S. roster because uh, I think she is a player, just a rookie in the NWSL last year that can really, really grow into this role. But you have to give her time and you have to give her minutes. And it starts now in this January camp. So uh, I think that we'll see a 45 minute split. This is my hopes and my dreams right here. We'll, we'll get a start from Andy Sullivan in the six, uh, 45 minutes. And then the last 45 will be closed out by Sam coffee. Um, I think that uh, that's what we'll see in, in that position as well. But then between uh, Lavelle uh, in that eight, I'm, I'm, I would love to see a Sanchez also get the start. Uh, Christy Mewis didn't see time last match either. I think that we could see her get minutes in that midfield role as well. Um, Korniak, maybe he'll put her a little bit higher, but I, I'm going to go with, I want, I want to see Lavelle and Ashley Sanchez in there with Andy Sullivan. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you a hundred percent. I think, I, I think that there don't leave any room for, for shock or, or surprise. I think at, at this point, um, you know, we talked about that that previous starting eleven. We were doing the recap about if there if, if we were surprised to sort of see it, and and that was kind of the energy we left with. It's like at this point, we're maybe not going to be too surprised at um, seeing some some different looks for for players in the starting eleven, but still leave enough room to to sort of chat about if it worked or if we you know if we thought we want to see them try something else, and like even like having that starting eleven drop and and seeing that it was Korniak and, and no Sullivan and the assumption was that she was going to slot into that role. It also, I mentioned how it was like, it was interesting. It was interesting for me. It was curious, but that it wasn't necessarily shocking in terms of like the, the concept of it all. It's like, Hey, like who's our no, tallest yeah. player on this pitch and who could we put in this role? And it's, and it's Korniak. Right. So um, it also just reminded me a little bit of uh it also just reminded me a little bit of Sam Mewis, who at once upon a time yeah. was was the tallest player um, on this team, and and who she is, and what she brought uh, to this to this pitch as well. And I think, you know, as we move forward, you know, and and watching this team as they navigate the re- the remaining what six months leading up mm-hmm. to the World Cup, that it perhaps isn't just that kind of, you know, this this quote unquote glaring hole of of this number six role for this team, but maybe it's a combined uh issue between the six, you know, and the eight. I think there's lots of people who are like, oh goodness, we relied so much on Earth that it that it feels like um with Earth's absence, it sort of feels like it's 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 glaring. But I would also say that that's a counter that's not a counter argument, but that's also a similar argument for uh the absence of somebody like a like a Sam Mewis. And I think that uh, from half to half, when you sort of like, when we're going back to Lindsay Horan and we're looking at 
how the, those two 45 minute shifts went in compared to the touches that she was getting in that right. first half versus that second half. It like the first, it was like, she was almost looking like an, like an extra winger out there at times, like playing very wide and then sort of seeing how things kind of um, uh, adjusted themselves out for, for this second 45 and, uh, kind of seeing her touches to connect with players who would then link up with the assist, whether it was, you know, a Rodman or a Sanchez, yeah. you know, kind of providing that hockey assist right at times. Um, and it just, it, it, there for me, I'm just kind of like, geez, like this, like Haran has become one of these integral players, one of these essential players for mm -hmm. Andonovsky in the starting 11s. And it's just, it's like with, the players that are now missing, I think, in these roles, I think there's like, there's almost like a layer of worry, right? There's almost like a layer of worry or concern. It's like, is this another player? Is this a third midfielder that we're looking at? And is there concern about, you know, extra minutes on, on, on the legs mm -hmm. or on the knee? You know, this is a player that unfortunately is very accomplished and has accomplished a lot of really cool things, both with club and country over the last year. I mean, Lindsay Rand's a, a the Champions League title Champions holder League. with yeah. with with Lyon, right? And then had clinched a spot in the World Cup with with this team over. It was a very busy 2022 for her, but that also includes like navigating a lingering uh, knee injury of her own. And it's like you don't you don't want to maybe like overburden a player like that in the build up to World Cup. Like even like having like the reaction of this release and sort of saying, yeah. like, oh, okay, she's going back to Lyon. And at the same time, you're like, why? <laughs> there's like because there's a game against Mont Montpellier tomorrow, like and yeah. and that's like a I would have you're so like she'll at still be point. she'll still be playing. It's not she's getting rest. It's not like hey, we want to conserve Haran, you know, save yeah. her body a little bit. No, she's still going to be playing a game. Uh, just yeah. with we'll love, see. Not with country. That's like a lot of travel. Like you're the opposite <laughs> end of the globe. So I'm. I yes, think that shows simple. how how important Vlako Anonofsky believes Haran to be for this U.S. team in this midfield to say, yeah, we're going to travel you to New Zealand for a week, right, or eight days, say, yeah. and then send you all the way back to France so then you can compete in a club game. I think it's a lot on a player's body for sure. Yeah, I think it's. I, I, look, I'm I'm curious to see how how Leon will line up uh, in, in their game now that she's uh, she's right. heading on back. But uh, there's well, there's still some more things to to talk about here as we look ahead to this this second match for the team to close things out.